journey from prototype to product. Uh, and I've often said that prototypes are easy, production is hard. Um, it's really, I'd say, a hundred to a thousand times harder to go from, to go from a prototype to a device that is uh, safe, reliable, works under a wide range of circumstances, is affordable, um, and done at scale. It's, it's insanely difficult. Um, I mean, there's an old saying that, you know, that it's 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration, but I think it might be 99%, 99.9% perspiration. Um, you know, the best example I could give of an idea being easy, but the execution being hard, is going to the moon. It's uh, the idea of going to the moon, easy. Going to the moon, very hard. <laughs> so, um, and uh, we've been working hard to uh, be ready for our first human, and obviously we want to be extremely careful uh, and certain that, that it will work well before putting a device in a human, but we're, we've submitted, I think, most of our paperwork to the FDA, and we're, we're, we think probably in about six months we should be able to have our first Neuralink in a human. So. But as I said, we, 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 we do everything we possibly can to test the devices before, uh, not, even, not, not even going into a human, before even going into uh, an animal. So we do benchtop testing, we do accelerated, accelerated life testing, uh, we have uh, a fake brain simulator uh, that has the, the texture and uh, it's like emulating a brain but it's sort of rubber. And uh, so any, we, we, before we would even think of putting a device in an animal, we, we do everything we possibly can with rigorous bench top, bench top testing. So we're not cavalier in putting devices into animals. Uh, we're, we're extremely careful and uh, we, we always want the device, whenever we do the implant, uh, if it's in a she sheep or a pig or a um, monkey, to be confirmatory, um, not exploratory, so that we, like we, we've, we've, we've t done everything we possibly can with bench top testing and, and only then would we consider putting a device in, in an animal. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll actually show you a, a demo later today of in a few hours, really, of uh, uh, of implanting in a brain proxy. Um, and if anyone in the audience wants to volunteer, uh, <laughs> we have the robot right there. So, let's see. And since since the pager demo, uh, we've expanded to work with a troop of six monkeys. Uh, we've uh, we've actually upgraded pager. Um, they do varied tasks. Um, and we do everything possible to ensure that, that things are stable and rec replicable and that, things la that the device lasts for a long time uh, without degradation. So, and uh, what you're seeing there is, it looks like the matrix, but that, that's uh, actually, th th that's a real output of, of neural signals. So that, that's, that's not a simulation or a, just a screensaver or something, that those are actual neurons firing. That is one of the, what one of the readouts looks like. And um, here you can see uh, Sake, it's one of our other monkeys, uh, typing on a keyboard. But now he's, it, this is telepathic typing. So to be clear, this is the, the he's, he's not actually using a keyboard. He's moving a, a, the cursor with his mind uh, to the highlighted key. Now, technically, um, uh, we can't, can't actually spell, and uh, <laughs> so I don't want to oversell this thing, uh, because that's, uh, that's the next version. <laughs> um, so the, but the, what's really cool here is, is um, Sake the monkey is moving the mouse cursor, using just his mind, moving the cursor around to the highlighted key and then spelling out what we, uh, you know, what we want, what we want to spell. But um, and then, uh, so so this this is uh, something that could be used for, for somebody who's who's say uh, 
uh, quadriplegic or tetraplegic uh, human, um, even before we make the, the, the spinal cord stuff work, uh, is being able to con uh, control a mouse cursor, control a phone, um, and we, we're, we're confident that, you, that uh, someone who is, has basically no other interface to the outside world would be able to uh, control their phone better than someone who has working hands. And I mentioned upgradability. Upgradability is very important because uh, our first production device will be much like an iPhone 1. And um, I'm pretty sure you would not want an iPhone 1 stuck in your head if the iPhone 14 is available. Um, so it's going to be, it's, um, be able to demonstrate full reversibility and upgradability so you can re remove a device and replace it with the latest version or if, if it stopped working for any reason, um, re replace it. It's, it that's, that, that's a fundamental uh, requirement for the device at Neuralink. And I should say both Saki and Page were upgraded to our la uh, latest and greatest implants. Uh, so. Uh, that, that's been really over a year and a half now that, that Pager has had f f the, f the first implant and then the upgraded implant. So this is a very good sign that it lasts for a long time with no uh, observed ill effects. I think it's also important to show that um, Saki actually likes doing the demo <laughs> um, and, and is not like strapped to the chair or anything. <laughs> so uh, it, it's, uh, yeah, so. Um, the monkeys actually enjoy doing the demos because they and, and they get the banana smoothie and it's kind of a fun game. So, um, oh, we, I, I guess the point I'm trying to make is like we care a great deal about animal wel <laughs> welfare, <laughs> and um, and I, I, I'm pretty sure we, like our monkeys are pretty happy, you know. So as you can see. You can